You're now listening to All Hog Sports. Covering all Arkansas Razorback sports, such as football, basketball, baseball, and much more. Now, here's your host for today's show, Sam Stimson. On today's episode, I'm going to be doing mid-season grades with a special guest. But before I get into that, make sure to follow my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at All Hog Sports Pod. All links for my podcast and all social medias are at allhogsports.com. And please share the podcast and leave a five-star review. Now, I'm recording this after the interview took place, and unfortunately, the second half of the interview and the sound quality was a little bit bad due to technical issues. I apologize for that. Now, on today's show, we have a special guest, Arkansas Football Fan Page on Instagram. You guys should definitely go check him out, but... I'll let you introduce yourself and tell the listeners who you are and kind of why you're a Razorback fan. Oh, what's going on, guys? Yeah, I've been running my Arkansas football fan page on Instagram for about four years now. I started it as a way to interact with fellow fans, and uh, I wanted to improve my journalism skills especially. So it's turned into something way bigger than I've expected, but I'm – Glad I did it, and I get to interact with a lot of you guys. Uh, but I became an Arkansas fan mostly because I in- inherited it. On my dad's side, virtually everybody's a Razorback fan, from my great-grandparents to my grandparents to my parents. So it's it just something that just gets passed down, and everybody on that side is Razorback fans. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Everybody in my family was a Razorback fan. You don't – see many Razorback fans who aren't born into it, which is something unique about this fan base because, you know, Mississippi State was getting bandwagons at the beginning year. Everyone who likes Arkansas has been on the train. We've been through the ups and downs. Oh, for sure. Nobody's nobody's bandwagoning Arkansas after the past two years. Yeah, and not at all. But it's finally nice to be good. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about midseason grades as they've played five games. But... I mean, they're technically two and three, but we both deep down know that they should have won at Auburn. Oh, for sure. We should be three and two in the top 25 right now. Yeah, I I definitely have to agree with that. And even if you want to count Auburn as a loss, just for purposes of how like the NCAA would look at it or the SEC, all three losses are the top 25 teams. And this Razorback team has outperformed a ton of expectations for me and I think other fans, and it's good to see Oh, for sure. It's awesome. It's excited. It's great to be excited about Arkansas football again. Yeah, for sure. But kicking it off with our offense grade, I'll let you go first and tell the listeners what you think of the offense so far. All right. So I am incredibly pleased. I'm going to go position by position and kind of analyze it. Starting at quarterback, I'm incredibly pleased with how Felipe Franks has formed. I mean, you look at him right now compared to, um, 2019, 2018, 2017, even 2016, Austin Allen, Felipe Bay has outperformed all of them thus far. And just seeing how quickly he's integrated into the Arkansas offense, considering the circumstances that he is a transfer quarterback and he's going into this uh, new system, I- I'm very pleased with how he's performed. He's limited turnovers, only three interceptions in five conference games, 11 touchdowns. I mean, that it's amazing how how much better he's performed compared to our past quarterbacks. Um, the running game we started off a little slow. The, you know we had Raheem Boyd out with an injury. There's been a, there's been some hiccups, but uh, overall I'm I'm pretty pleased. I think you saw in a Texas a m game they're kind of picking stuff up, and Traylon mm-hmm. Traylon Smith was great in Raheem Boyd's presence. I mean he wasn't racking up rushing yards, but he was also great. Uh, pass blocking, or even uh, he picked up a lot of receiving yards in that Auburn game. So Traylon's been great. Overall, I think you're going to see things pick up there, but there was a bit of a slow start. Um, with the wide receivers, I'm super pleased. I mean, I guess the only thing to point out is Trey Knox is, seems to be having a sophomore slump this year. He only has four receptions for 33 yards this year, something I didn't really expect. So, But overall, you've had a couple of drops, but I'm – very pleased with what I've seen from the wide receivers so far, especially Debian Warren and Mike Woods. Both of those guys, I think, exceeding expectations from uh, the preseason. And then the offensive line is probably what I am, I would say, I'm most proud of, just considering 
how bad our offensive line play was under Bielema's last year, under Chad Morris's two years as the head coach. I'm incredibly pleased with how, with run blocking, but pass protection, especially like Felipe actually has time to uh, throw the ball, move around. I mean, you've seen him able to pick up a bunch of chunk plays with running the ball. So I think I'm very pleased with the offensive line more than I am of any other position. But if I'm going overall, I, I would grade the offense about a B plus. I think there are some kinks that need to be worked out overall, but the improvement from last year is so drastic and obvious. And I think when our run game gets going, combined with Felipe's uh, great performance so far this year, I think we're going to be a scary team on offense too. Yeah, I, I would basically agree with everything you said. Like you said, B, B plus, I'm going to put him at a B. And like you said, Felipe Franks is playing so good. And for a guy that gets a ton of criticism for no reason, I don't understand why. Like, a lot of Florida fans were like, oh, you can have him, whatever. And he's playing really good down here. I'm great. It's great to have him. He's playing professional, you know, NFL-type ball down here, and he has a chance to go get drafted. And also, we had five starting QBs last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just any stability at the quarterback position, I'm happy with. For sure. I mean, anybody who is going to go out there is, um, you know, probably going to run the offense good, in my opinion. But I looked at Franks in a way that he's a redshirt senior, and Sherry could come back. I guess, you know, I'll save that talk for later, but he's a leader on this team. He's one of the captains, and he's going to teach the rest of the young QBs, like, KJ, John Stephen Jones, Malik Hornsby. Anybody on that team is going to learn from him, and I think it's really good to have him kind of step into a position at Arkansas where he's setting himself up to possibly get drafted into the NFL and then setting up the future of the, this offense. Oh, yeah. I think I think he'll be playing on Sundays for sure. Yeah, I, I would agree there. But rushing, um, like you said, Boyd had kind of a slow start because of his injury. But when he got healthy, everything looked fine. And I was really happy with how Smith um, stepped up in his spot. I mean, he got the job done and had good enough for performances, especially when he was getting dump-off passes and things like that. I think, though, Boyd is going to have an emerging role as the season goes on because he's getting healthier. I mean, you saw against A&M where he put up 100 yards, frankly, because we were off the bye and he was healthy. So... Rushing, I'm pleased with as well. And then receiving, I couldn't be any happier. I mean, Traylon Burks is an absolute beast. And just seeing him get that one-handed catch against Ole Miss, I I went crazy in the stands. I was like, there's no way he just caught that. That was awesome. I mean, definitely top five SEC wide receiver there. But Devion Warren stepped up when Burks was injured. You know, Burks and Warren seemed like the guys that Franks really liked in the end zone. And I think yeah. having some type of chemistry connection between those two is important. But Mike Woods is playing good. And then I think one thing that's interesting is Trey Knox really isn't getting a role in this offense. But I yeah. think it's just kind of a sophomore slump. And, I mean, if you don't need him, you know, don't try to make opportunities. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I am a tad bit worried about that, though, because I don't know if you remember, but last year, like, Basically, every uh, game in the second half of the season last year, Trey Knox was, like, posting subliminal messages about possibly transferring. So I'm a, I'm a little bit worried there. I hope I hope he doesn't end up, like, going somewhere. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, we played him a ton in the Auburn game, and he had two crucial drops. And I think mm-hmm. based off of that performance, kind of led him to kind of not get that much reps. But I think a guy like him – is really crucial for the Razorbacks to keep. And like you said, I remember that whole thing about talks of him transferring. And if there's really anybody on this Razorbacks team that could have an impact that may transfer, it's definitely him. And also, you know, we've seen the last 24 hours, we've had two more transfers, Spivey and then a walk-on wide receiver because Mm -hmm. the NCAA is guaranteeing eligibility. So getting him a role in the offense, I think, will be really good for him and his future with the Razorbacks to develop with Coach Step and all those guys. For sure. But when you talked about the offensive line, I've been really pleased with how they've been playing. I They kind of collapsed against Texas A&M, but I'm just going to say that that's Texas A&M's defensive line. They played so good that game. And even if the pocket has collapsed for the offensive line, Frank's has been able to run around pretty good. But the offensive line was creating holes for the run game against A&M. I think going forward, 
that will keep up in a sense, and it'll be something that is persistent as the offensive line playing better. And when you talked about the offensive line, you said we haven't seen good offensive line play since the last year, Belema and Chad Morris. Now last year, Belema, we didn't have Sam Pittman here. You know, remember Sam Pittman being the offensive line coach here and we had a good line then. So Sam Pittman comes back and we have a good line. And then Mark Davis is a really good coach from Missouri as well. And then the other thing on this offensive line I think a lot of people are giving enough credit to is Ricky Stromberg. If you look at the snap compared to how it was under Chad Morris, the snap is so much cleaner. And we haven't seen any mishaps of high snap, low snaps, false starts because of the center. He's been playing really solid ball right there in the trenches. And then another thing is all these guys are gaining weight. They all got to 300 during the COVID offseason except for one or two of them. And that's just the thing. I never will ever understand Chad Morris' theory of sub-300 SEC linemen. It will make yeah. no sense to me. No, nah, I, I agree with you there. But, I mean, offensive line, I think, is going to play better throughout the season. But for that reason, I'm going to give him a B. I think the keys are all there. Like, we saw a run game against a and We saw receiving been good this year. We've seen Franks play really good. And I feel like as everything just kind of clicks and gets him more efficient – with Kendall Bryles offense, because there's obviously no camp due to COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Got any more thoughts though on this offense? No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the future. Though. Like you said, Chad Morris's weird approach with the offensive line is going to work. So I'm actually super excited to go back to Sam Pittman's approach with the offensive line. I think Arkansas is going to have the best offensive line in football a couple years from now. Yeah, I think that'll definitely be a point where Pittman's going to bring these guys. I mean, you look at Georgia's offensive line. That's one of the reasons that Georgia is so good. I mean, obviously this isn't a Georgia podcast, but if you look at that Georgia team, that offensive line is consistently getting guys drafted in the first round and is dominating in any SEC trenches. So I think a lot of things taken away from his time at Georgia will be applied at Arkansas in terms of like performance. I agree. Now, moving on on to the defense, obviously, Barry Odom was fired after the Arkansas game last year, actually. He was Missouri's head coach, and he was a really good defensive coordinator before that. He didn't go for the job at Memphis as a head coach. He chose to come here to coach defensive coordinator at Arkansas, and we've seen that play out massively. I'll start it off with you. What are your thoughts on this defense so far? I mean, there's not much to complain about. I mean, if you just look... Every every part of the ball, every the secondary, the D line, everybody's performing better than last year. The the improvement is substantial. I mean, you've seen individual players. Grant Morgan has his improvement has been huge. He's been a great this year. You got Bumper and he's got Forrest. and he's got one arm. <laughs> yeah, I know he his improvement has been drastic. You could look at Bumper Pool. He's consistently his. His development from freshman year on, like I can't imagine his senior year, like he's slowly developing into an NFL player. I definitely think he'll be a, a pro talent. Even now, the secondary, like Jalen Catalan, has surprised me greatly. Like I, kn- I knew that he was gonna be great, but I did not know he was gonna be great this quick. Like the first, because he he didn't get much playing time last year. So no, if you just seeing how well he's played in just his very first few games is super pleasing. But overall, just across the defense, I'm, I'm pleased with our secondary. You know, the Texas A&M game, I, I wasn't too hot about. I didn't didn't like uh, some of the stuff I was seeing there. But, I mean, it's going to happen. You're going to have bad games. You forget. I mean, people forget we were 2-10 and 10 last year. So it's not going to be uh, just like that. But for the most part, Outside of the Texas A&M game, I've been super pleased with the secondary. I would like to see more pressure on the quarterback. I know we saw some earlier on this season, but as time goes on, I'm starting to see a little bit less uh, pressure on the quarterback than I'd like. Just quarterback seems to have a lot of time lately. But just overall, for the most part, for the defense, it's not perfect. But uh, I think we're going to perform well against Tennessee and all these other teams, you know, the teams that the defense have struggled in have been Texas A&M and Georgia. Those are two top 10 teams. So I think we're going to play great against uh, the teams that are around that same kind of talent base. And I just, the job that Barry Odom has done is phenomenal coming from John Chavis, who I would argue 
to me is the worst defensive coordinator the SEC has ever seen. In my opinion, 